Alright, so we're doing speed runs, so here's our GPS, we'll go ahead and zero that out. Zeroed. Let's see what we did on that. I think we did good. I don't want to push my butt. Oh, we got faster. 46 miles an hour. How's that, uh, sprocket looks okay. All right, let's do another run. And welcome back again. This is Bryce, and thanks for tuning into my YouTube channel, Jack of Trades. We're doing these videos back to back just because we've got a lot of, uh, ideas that we're playing around with and we're, we're getting video footage of it and, and sharing it with you out there. Um, so I couldn't help myself. I got super excited about making parts for this bike. Um, and the first thing I want to do is make it go faster. My top speed of the bike was 39 miles an hour and that's not the fastest. I've seen people getting 42 miles an hour so I was kind of bummed that I wasn't getting as fast as, as those other people. And um, so I immediately thought of ways I can make it go faster. And the easiest way is to just put some new gearing on it, right? Well, you can't get gearing, and I don't even know if anyone's making gearing yet. Um, I know you can buy replacement sprockets, or you can order replacement sprockets. They haven't started shipping yet. But I think it's just the stock gearing because it actually requires a little bit of effort to make um, the custom gearing work. And that's what I'm going to go into on this video. Um, so I went ahead and designed up... I've never made sprockets before, so I had to kind of go back and learn um, the geometry of a sprocket. I've done like tracked vehicle sprockets, I've done gears, but I've never done a chain sprocket, a roller chain sprocket. And so there's an ANSI standard for how to design those, and I went ahead and came up with my own calculator for the geometry of the gearing uh, using the ANSI standard. Um, and then I modeled up a sprocket. And it's a it's a parametric model, so I can I can change the teeth on it pretty easily. Um, and then I went ahead and printed a sprocket. Now I was going to machine a sprocket, uh, just because you know aluminum sprocket will probably hold it better than a, a printed sprocket. But I went ahead and printed up a sprocket because that was quick and dirty. So I went from the stock sprocket, which is 36 teeth, down to what I would consider the extreme smallest sprocket you can get, which is a 24 tooth. Um, if you did some more custom, well, I don't know. I think 24 is probably pushing the limits because you get to the point where the chain starts to rub on the wheel hub. And then you also get to the point where the chain starts to rub, rub on the uh, swing arm. Um, we're, we're just clearing that swing arm where we're not, I guess we're getting a little bit of rubbing on it, but it's not taking off material. So I think we're in a sweet spot for the small sprocket you can get on this bike. Um, so I printed that off. I also had to end up making my own inserts because the inserts that come with the kit didn't give me enough range of travel. They don't go the whole travel of that slot. Um, they only go kind of from the outer edges in a little bit, but they don't go all the way to center. So I need to go a little further to get good tension on the chain. So I went ahead and designed up and printed some of those inserts. So then, once I got those parts situated, um, what do I do about the chain? These chains are kind of a one-piece assembly or a non-separable assembly. Um, there's no master link in this chain. I played around with bikes enough that um, I know how to break a chain without a master link and I know how to put a chain back together without a master link. So I went ahead and shortened up my chain um, so that I could run it with a smaller sprocket. Um, and just 
For your information, this is a standard chain size. The chain is a 04B, so you can go ahead and Google that and you'll find suppliers for this chain, as well as suppliers for the master links for these chains. So you can get away from this fixed chain and go with uh, an adjustable chain where you, you shorten the chain up and, and basically use a master link to take it on and off. Um, it's not necessary to get the master links. I think you can do the chain without it, but uh, it does take some kind of um, shop skills. <laughs> Um, so with that being said, I got the setup all put back together and I ran it and it was faster. And actually, surprisingly, what I wasn't expecting is that it was quieter. So the plastic sprocket it runs much quieter than the aluminum sprocket, which is kind of a nice bonus. So what did I get? Well, according to my calculator, I should have gotten about 58.5 miles an hour. However, I only got 51 miles an hour, but I did go from 39 miles an hour to 51 miles an hour. So that's a huge improvement in speed. Um, I've definitely lost torque. I'm not popping wheelies anymore, but I wasn't going for that. I knew I was going to sacrifice torque for speed. Um, so that's what I got. Uh, I think I'm a little over geared now because I didn't hit my 58.5. So there's going to be an optimization where I'm basically hitting the speeds I expect from my calculator. So um, if I go with a slightly larger sprocket, then I think I might be able to hit that speed and get a little bit faster. Um, right now I'm running a 24-2 sprocket. If I went with a like a 26 or 28, um, I might get you know 54, 55 miles an hour. Um, the other thing that you can do on this bike, I haven't really dug into it, but I did have the side panel off um, to um, look at the, the drive sprocket. Um, and there's a brushless motor in there from the drive turner. It looks like a standard um, brushless motor. It's a 3700 kV motor. And I thought, well, I bet you could replace that 3700 kV motor with something different, like a 4600 kV motor or 45, you know. You could probably put a faster motor in this bike um, if you want to go that route as well. Um, it probably will result in shorter run times and the motor might um, overheat as well, but just to kind of do those speed runs, if you're into that, um, that might be a way to go as well. And I'm saying this without any research into that aspect. I don't know about the electronics. Um, I haven't read the manual on motor changes. If there are anything in the manual about motor changes, I'm just looking at that motor thinking that it could probably be swapped with a different motor, potentially. Um, but that's another video and another project. For now, I'm gonna keep playing around with these sprockets. Um, I might go ahead and machine one, but I'm, I'm really happy with the performance of the 3D printed sprocket. It doesn't have any wear on it. Uh, you know, I only ran it a couple times back and forth, but it, it looks like it's holding up okay. Um, good enough to do speed runs where I don't know if I want to waste time machining a sprocket when I could 3D print a sprocket in 20 minutes. Um, so yeah, it, 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 it was a fun little project that took a couple hours of my time and, and the results were, were beneficial, um, at least for me. I was going for speed, not torque. One thing I did discover, so because I had the wheel apart, um, I wanted to see how easy it would be to swap out these tires from the wheels because it is a two-piece wheel. Um, unfortunately, they're gluing the tires to the wheels, which means it's going to be a pain in the butt you know, if you want to get this tire off, you're basically scrapping the tire and trying to save the wheel. All right, so let's get on to the footage. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Take care. Bye. All right, so we're going to start looking at making some parts for this bike. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start by uh, taking off the driver, actually. So let's try that. <laughs> So what I want to do is I want to start looking at making some smaller sprockets so we can get faster speeds out of the bike. In addition to a sprocket, you have this kind of chain guide here, um, which will have to match the sprocket. So I'm going to take this off and reverse engineer that as well. But this is the part that we're going to also have to redesign for a smaller sprocket. Tires look like they're glued on, which is going to be problematic for 
replacing tires. Alright, so there's the rear wheel hub. One piece with bearings. We got the wheel, let's take the wheel apart. You can unscrew the wheel. It's actually a pretty complicated looking wheel design. It's got these interlocking teeth. It's clever. But the tire appears to be glued to the, uh, the rim. So that is going to be a pain in the butt to replace tires on this thing. But the focus of today is on the sprocket and making um, a new one. Like initially I will try to 3D print one of these and then machine one, machine them out of aluminum. I'm doing some gear calculations and I want to look at my um, sprocket. So that's transmission. So this is the flywheel. Um, this is the drive motor. All right, so I went ahead and designed my own custom uh, sprocket um, and 3D printed it. I am not under the illusion this will last forever, but I think I can get some runs on it just to see how it does. Uh, this is a 24 tooth sprocket going from a 36 tooth sprocket. I think the 24 tooth is probably the smallest you're going to be able to get with the current um, wheel hub design uh, because basically as you put that sprocket on there, uh, the chain is basically dragging. It's going to start, it start, if you're going smaller, the chain will start dragging on the, um, the wheel hub. You can also start playing around with larger front sprockets to give you different ratios as well. Um, so let's get this put back together and see if we can get faster run times out of the bike. So next thing we have to mess around with is shortening this chain. Uh, we're gonna have to break it. Uh, take out a couple links and then put it back together. This chain doesn't have a master link. Um, I've actually ordered some master links, so those should show up. So that makes it easier to uh, mess around with chains. Um, but I think we can kind of fudge it for today, uh, just to get something going. I'm gonna go and put this on the, I might do this on the Arbor Press. Let me get that set up. So I went ahead and designed and printed some uh, chain tensioner inserts. The kit comes with five different sets and they vary from zero, basically plus half millimeter and minus half millimeter. But they don't get all the way to the center of the insert. So I think to have a complete set of these inserts, you'd want to have a set that basically goes from this extreme where you're all the way on the edge all the way to the middle and then once you get to the middle you can actually flip it over and you start going back the other way. Um, I don't have a complete set still but I thought I printed what I thought I would need for this particular chain setup. So let's try them out. It's better than what it was before with this um, custom insert but actually this chain tension feels Okay, uh, let's go and give it a rip, see what it does. All right, we're gonna go do some speed runs to see if this sprocket uh, makes us faster. Hopefully it holds up. It, it is 3D printed, so I don't think it'll last forever, but if I can get a couple runs in, then I'll be happy. Let's reset. Okay.
got up to 51 miles an hour. That might be a new record for the Velocity Pro Moto MX.